What do you like in Tampa Bay this Sunday? I actually like this one the best, too. It's kind of funny. <laughs> I like the Niners. Uh, I liked it better when, before it got up to six, but uh, I, I think there's a couple of things that work here. I mean, DVOA isn't the be-all, end-all, but it's strongly in favor of the Niners. Uh, their average success per play is, is still pretty strong. Uh, they've had this week to rest. And this is, you know, if you read Warren Sharp at all, you know he's big on the rest advantages and how the Niners have had historically poor rest uh, advantages or disadvantages, if you will, most of the season. For once, though, they co- they're coming off the bye, and the Bucks are coming off short rest, and they're extremely banged up. The Niners got this uh, bye week; it's manna from heaven. Uh, you know they get, uh, you know they're going to get Christian McCaffrey back finally this week. I think that's going to unlock a few things in their offense. Uh, they they buffeted their uh, defensive line a little bit, which I think they needed to do with a couple of key injuries there. So I, I think things are kind of pointing in the right direction for them. And always a reminder, folks, to shop around because if you do like the Niners, you're going to want to take the six, even though. Jeff pointed out he's not thrilled it got up to six. Jeff, at most shops right now, it's up to six and a half. Yep. So yep. if you're on the Tampa side of things, take that half point. It certainly doesn't hurt. Here's one we're in full agreement on. Is it just me or is this number in Jerry's world too short? Are, are we looking at a potential slaughter by Jalen Hurts and company? I think so. Uh, it looks like A.J. Brown's full go. DJ, uh, Dallas Goddard has looked like he's going to be back. Uh, Devonta Smith practiced today. It looks like they'll get him back as well. Uh, there was some concern maybe that hammy might be an issue. And I know this is kind of a vibe sort of thing, and that's always kind of scary. But seriously, you got a backup quarterback against an Eagles defense that's getting doing a better job of getting to the passer now than it did earlier this season. Uh, Jerry's Jerry's world is not a fortress. We know this. Uh, that it, it, yeah, they do call me McSquarex in for a reason. I am total square on these games. I, I've got so many road favorites that I like, uh, but I, I just feel like this is uh, too short of a number. Yeah, Dallas zero and three at home this year, straight up. And uh, I don't think we're going to be hearing Cooper rush to Jonathan Mingo in the end zone a whole lot on Sunday. That was a disastrous deadline move, I thought. I was talking about this game a lot right before you hopped on with us. Chargers, Titans, I'm on LA, minus the seven. It's not that I think the Chargers are this juggernaut. I just don't know how Tennessee is going to score in this one. You seem to agree with me a little bit with that thought process. What's your best play in this one? Yeah, I like the the total on this one, the under on uh, that. The, I mean, the Chargers, everybody knows that they've been consistently hitting the under on these. I worry about a pick six, especially if Will, Will Levis plays as threatened. Um, but <laughs> at the same time, um, it's not like Mason Rudolph has been actively good. I, you know, they, they, sc- they scored 20 points against the, the, the Pats. Uh, they, you, know, you saw the Bills game earlier this year. You could just see with your own eyes just that he was making poor decisions along the way as well, especially with any modicum of pressure. And I think the Chargers will be able to achieve that. Uh, this is the us is also a team, the Titans. It's not like they've got this traveling fan base that all of a sudden is going to make the Chargers uh, feel like a, a stranger in their own home. Uh, so there, I don't think there's anything like that. It's not like the Steelers coming to town or the you know the Eagles coming to town where it's more than half opposing fans or anything of right. that nature. Um, I just think this is a team that, in the case of the Chargers, too, that's starting to really kind of feel itself on the offensive side of things there. Uh, I, I think that, you know, you're, you know we're, we're looking at a really good corporate and ju- uh, quarterback in Justin Herbert who's getting healthier and healthier. Uh, Quentin Johnson is actually catching two out of three good balls thrown to him. So that's, you know, progress. We'll take that. Uh, Palmer's healthy now. I, I think this is a pretty comfortable game for the Chargers. Yeah, and you talk about that offense starting to really find themselves. What do you like that offense to do? What do you like in terms of uh, coming from a prop angle here? Well, I, I like the uh, the you know I like the passing yards for Justin Herbert. I think if you look again, this is where you definitely can shop around. Not always can you find a side that gets much variance, but with 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 all the individual player uh, projections, props, picks, whatever you want to call it, um, you can shop around. Justin Herbert's at two two twenty and a half over at FanDuel. He's at other shops. I think I've seen it as high as two thirty and a half. So definitely shop around, uh, and you can have some fun. Oh, and of course, also you can you know you can you know buy some buy it up or buy it down if you'd like sometimes too to, to get push it in the right direction. But again, I, I think that Herbert is healthier, much healthier than he was earlier in the season. I think that's reflecting his performance as of late. Yeah, you're spot on with that ten yard variance. By the way, I'm seeing two twenty and a half at Bet Rivers. Uh, 225 is the consensus at most shops, and then 230 is all the way up at at FanDuel at the moment. Let's talk Sunday night 
football. I think this is another instance where we might be on the same side. And I'm going to tell you on that under, by the way, in addition to my Chargers play. What do you mm-hmm. like Sunday night? I've been hearing a lot of people in and around the studio talk about the Texans, the public money heavily on Detroit. I'm on the Detroit Lions who have covered eight of their last nine as road favorites. What say you about this one? Yeah, I, I feel sometimes we galaxy brain this. Uh, Lions are just really good. <laughs> and, I, you know, I don't want to toady up to Derek Stevens too much as much as we love him and over at Circa there. But the Lions are a wagon right now. I, I, and I think you've got a coach that coaches them up, gets them up for every single game. They, they don't have so many letdowns like they've done in the past. Now, this, this, this would be ripe in a way just because it's a non-conference foe after a big divisional win in the uh, in the rain and all that they prove they can beat the elements you could see them letting their guard down but i don't think campbell's gonna let them um i i think this is a team that is going to still be able to move the ball pretty well against the texans and i don't think nico collins is gonna be appreciably well enough to make a big difference and i think that's a huge huge difference for the texans uh we we've seen a lot with uh, cj stroud that it's just not the same offense this year. They don't have, you know, as many fullbacks in there to, to make play action work as effectively. They don't go, you know, the deep patterns that Tank Dell was finding like wide swaths of space last year just don't work. The, the play, the patterns don't, you know, they can't hold that long. Uh, the offensive line isn't as strong as it was last year. Uh, I, 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 and I think the Lions take advantage of it. I also love that they went out and got uh, Smith at the trade deadline there. Uh, I, I thought that was just a master stroke. I thought. The Lions, you know, I, I thought had the, the most targeted ad they, the, of any team out there in football. Yeah, you know, let, let's call it what it is. Everyone's saying, oh, the Lions defense, no Aiden Hutchinson. They don't look like they've skipped a beat. And Zadarius Smith yeah. is not Aiden Hutchinson, but Houston allowed eight sacks to a Jets defense that has done nothing but regress since they fired Robert Sala. Houston's O-line, I think, is a big concern. Nico Collins and Will Anderson's health on each side of the ball, I think, is a big concern. I'm with yep. you a thousand percent. I love this play. You mentioned CJ Stroud and this offense not looking the same as it did a year ago. What are you fading about this offense in the prop market? Well, uh, again, we'll just go to the passing yards. I think that's an easy way to do it there. Uh, FanDuel's at 200, 230 and a half on CJ Stroud. I'll, I'll, I'll take less than. Um, I, I, I think it's this, t- this offense runs through Joe Mixon first and foremost right now. Not through Stroud, not and and may, yeah, obviously a lot of that has to do with Collins not being there. You can see a direct through line from the moment he got hurt in the Buffalo game there. That this is just a different offense, and I, I just don't think we'll see a full strength Collins this week. Yeah, I'm with you 100. percent The fact that you know we're headed into Friday morning and uh, Nico Collins has not practiced yet, even if he's out there, how effective, how impactful will he be? I don't think he'll be much more than a decoy should he even suit up at all leave us with one more prop i'm kicking myself i didn't take the vikings minus four earlier in the week in duval now it's up to seven what do you like in this game well tj hawkinson uh played basically a half a game against the colts last week in his return i i I think he plays a larger uh, percentage of the snaps and he gets a larger percentage of the targets uh the jaguars are, are, are just horrific covering anything um and i think hawkinson at 32 and a half receiving yards over at bet rivers um, I, I think you can eclipse that, so I'll be all over that. I'm curious, when you look at the side in this one, a lot of experts would say, oh, you know, you missed, you, you missed the boat as it's gone from four to seven. If you like Minnesota, now it's unbettable. Jacksonville, though, they've stunk this year, even with Trevor Lawrence. Now you're looking at, what, C.J. Beathard or Mac Jones going to step in and play QB for him? Would you lay the seven? You mentioned some road favorites. Is this one you would consider, or is that just to stay away? Uh, it's more the latter. I think I'm probably just going to stay away. Uh, I, I, I think I, if I were, you know, forced to pick, say like, you know, I'm, I'm in a spread pick pool where we have to pick every game and, and I didn't get it locked in, then I'm definitely going to go ahead and take the Viking side. Although it's funny that Jacksonville has been squirrely about covering when they shouldn't, you know, last week against the Eagles. Oh. No, no worthy in that respect there. Uh, you know, thanks. Thanks for those uh, fourth down go for it decisions there, Nick. Uh, appreciate <laughs> you there. But uh, yeah, I, I do think that this is, a good stay away here. I, I just, I, I, there might be a, a case there where they get out to that lead and they kind of take the air out of the balloon. Yeah, I was on the Eagles minus seven in that one. And Nick Sirianni is the only reason I'm worried about Philly covering the seven this week against Cooper Russian company down there in Dallas. Jeff, thanks so much for the time, man. Appreciate you. My pleasure. Talk to you soon. Jeff Erickson, the senior editor.